Coming up today on Uncommon Sense, I will interview Nancy Brown, author of very many books. We're going to talk about her newest book, so stay tuned to hear about what that is. Welcome to Uncommon Sense, the official podcast of the Society of Gilbert Keith Chesterton. As I said, I'm joined here with Nancy Brown. How are you, Nancy? I'm doing great, Gretelyn. It's so good to be here with you. It's great to have you here. Um, I'm Gretelyn Darkey, your your host today. We are missing Joe Grabowski, but he'll be back hopefully next time. Um, anyway, uh, it's just wonderful to have you. I've I've read um, a decent amount of Nancy's books, but she keeps putting them out like. <laughs> so it's it's hard to keep up um but but uh we're we're gonna talk mostly today about uh your newest book nancy do you want to tell us a little bit about that sure absolutely it is called the chestertons and the top meadow troop mm. and uh it is beautifully illustrated by ann Englehart, who is also the illustrator of the first book mm. in the series so th this is the second work in a series that may only have two books. I'm not really sure. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will let me know if that if that should go on. Um, but the first book in the series was called The Chestertons and the Golden Key. And this was a story that um, you just really, really spoke to my heart because uh, in the in Maisie Ward's biography of G.K. Chesterton. Um, so the first biography that she wrote was just called G.K. Chesterton. And then so many people wrote to her that they had notes about the Chestertons and more stories about the Chestertons that she actually wrote a second book called Return to Chesterton. Mm. And in that story, she had a chapter called The Last Family, and it was mm. all about the Nickel family. And those are the girls that are in this story. Oh. So it's, kind of, it's based on real people. Mm. Um, now I have... I have taken artistic license. I've made them younger <laughs> than they were in real life. They were really teenagers, but to, mm. to, but to you know, it really seemed like it, they should be younger when they met him. So anyway, they are a little bit younger in my story. So well, the they're first, well, they're close. Ahead. They're sort of like you know, Narnia age children, right? I think yes. they're about they're about that age. So yeah, they're yeah. probably like twelve, ten, eight. The girl. Yeah. There's and there's three girls, and then there's um, two neighbor boys who figure mm. into this first story pretty prominently. And the first story is how they actually meet the Chestertons and, and mm. what happens the very first time when they first meet. The Chestertons are actually on vacation. And this family lives where they are vacationing in Lyme Regis. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's in England. It's a seaside village where a lot of uh, Londoners go for vacation. Mm. And so um, once I wrote that story, the second story of what happens with that family just seemed to come to me like, oh, it has, it's got to be Christmas. And, mm. and I knew this family eventually in real life, they actually moved to Beaconsfield to be near the Chestertons. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So they, they loved the Chestertons so much that they wanted to live near them. And so this story is kind of an in-between story. It's like, how do we convince mother that we should move <laughs> to Beaconsfield? And um, and also the the oldest girl, Claire, um, a girl who I think you and I could both relate to. She wants to be a writer. Mm. She's 12 years old. She's mm. read all these books and she loves Chesterton's mysteries. Mm. She's an aspiring writer. Mm. All of the feelings, the angst, um, can I get published? Where do I send this? All of that, they figure into both of these books. And Chesterton mm. is her mentor. Oh. Because he's already a successful writer. So why not ask him all your questions about how do I become a published writer? Oh. So um, uh, Claire is, is uh, you know, I really relate to her. She's, um, she's very much... Um, someone who I was when I was 12, wanting mm. to be that writer. I feel that too, for sure. I, I have a very distinct memory, uh, probably when I was about 12, sitting in a stairwell uh, some for some reason in, in a school and writing in my little mm. notebook. And, you know, I, I think I still have it. And I think it was a story about Santa Claus. And I think it's probably very embarrassing just because it was... <laughs> 
it's a 12 year old, <laughs> but you know, story. yeah, but, but it's, uh, it's kind of, yeah, I think, I think that, uh, those of us who have had those sort of feelings are gonna, are gonna really relate. That's great. Definitely. Definitely. And the, so then, uh, she, Claire, so Claire's the writer, Joan is the middle girl and she is the musician. So in the mm. first story, um, the, there's a whole episode about how she loves music. She wants to play music. She wants to learn music, but the piano in their house is locked. Um, and that's what the golden key is all about in the first story. In the second story, she's she's practicing. She's she's got a, a new professional music teacher, and she's she wants to work hard for her. So that Joan and I also relate to Joan because I grew up in a family of music. Mm -hmm. We had a piano and an organ, and you know we had guitar. Somebody was doing the flute. Somebody was doing the clarinet. We always had something musical going on, and mm -hmm. practicing you know was so much a part of my childhood as well. So that's Joan. The youngest girl is Cecilia. They call her Cece. Mm -hmm. And Cecilia is all over the place. Uh, some younger <laughs> children are. Um, she loves sports. Uh, she's mm -hmm. always running around. She wants to train the dogs that, that are in the house. So we do have um, a couple of important dogs in the story. <laughs> so the Chestertons, of course, have a dog and their dog is Winkle. And mm -hmm. the Nickel family actually has a dog of their own. And the, and the dog's name uh, is Pepper. And during this uh, second book, the dogs are entered into a dog show. Oh, so there's a little drama <laughs> that goes on with that too. So that's that's fun with that. Nice. So this is this is a, a a Christmas story. It's just a family story. I mean, are there any books out there, Gretelin, that you know where the action takes place right in the house? Of Gilbert and Francis Chesterton. Oh, well, not enough. That's for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and I think it's I I just think it's wonderful that you're writing them because you have done so much research. Um, if you haven't read Nancy's book, The Woman Who Was Chesterton, go get it right now because it's wonderful. Um, and you can get it on our website at chesterton.org. Uh, but yeah, this I, I'm really excited for this because. I just think you're the person to write these. This is, this is wonderful. So, well, I, I, you know, writing a biography is completely different than writing a children's story, mm -hmm. but it, you know, but you know, the Holy spirit inspires us when, when he will. So you never know what you're going to end up writing. And, and, and I think reading Chesterton and studying Chesterton, a children's story coming out of that makes so much sense. I mean, it totally does. <laughs> he would have loved that. And, um, I don't know. Did he write anything specifically for children? Maybe some poetry? Not I, I really. Definitely think poetry. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, the whole book, Colored Lands, it's all yes, a little. Yes, Colored Lands is yeah, good. Yeah, I think those were written. And and there were lots of poems. It's speaking of the Nickel family, the girls would write poems to Gilbert mm -hmm. and Francis, and Gilbert and Francis would write poems back to them. We have, though Some of those are actually in the collected work, so mm. definitely in the poetry department. Nice, nice. Well, um. So, so, t so this one, so this new one is like a little less historical, a little more, um, from your own mind. Like, uh, or... Yes. I would say the bones of it, the skeleton of it is historical because they mm -hmm. did actually convince their mother somehow to, or she would, she convinced them, I, <laughs> but I think it was probably the other way around, yeah. um, to, to move. Now they don't move until the very end of the book. So this is the mm -hmm. story of, you know, spoiler alert. Of, Right. A little spoiler alert. Sorry. Um, they're visiting the Chestertons and Claire has it in her mind that this this visit is going to be it. This is going to prove to mother that we we should move here. Um, so it's, you know, and it's based on as much, um, you know, like like I do know what Top Meadow looked like. I have not mm -hmm. been inside it, but I've seen all the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, Dale Alquist has told me about it, you know, so getting all the details of of the home and and that sort of thing. The, mm. the other characters that are in the book, we are introduced to a couple of neighbors and a cousin. So the cousin in the story is, that's actually his name. He did actually spend school holidays with the Chestertons for 10 years wow. while he was growing up. Wow. So basically, if you went to visit the Chestertons during a school holiday, Michael would have been at home with them. Mm. And then Felicity is the other new character. And she actually was, she's a real neighbor. Mm. Um, Francis wrote a whole poem about Felicity and was mm. a very, you know, they were very close, um, friends. And so she definitely is, um, 
a real person. It's based on a real person and a real relationship. Nice. I I love that. I think that's, that's really cool. And, and that's something unique too, that you can, you know, for, for all of us parents of young children out there, you can take to your children and and say, you know, here's this great story. And at the end, that's, these are real people and and watch their eyes light up. And, (laughs) you know, my, my five-year-old's always like, what? So that really happened? Yeah, Jesus rose from the dead, like that sort of thing. But, <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> right. this is this is uh these are real people. This really happened. That's so, that's so right. neat. Um, so so what was like? Is I know you say the Holy Spirit, and I believe that. Yeah, but right. um, was there some impetus that that you think first got you started down this this thought trail of writing these children's books? Well, uh, it happened actually long ago, about 20 years ago, when I first got introduced to Chesterton, and Mm. I went to my very first Chesterton conference. Mm. And my girls at the time were very young. So now, of course, they're young adults. And um, (laughs) but at the time, I was so enthusiastic about Chesterton, I had just started learning about him. And I was amazed by him. And I, I wanted to t- tell my children about Chesterton in a way that they could understand because they were like, why are you so enthusiastic about this guy, you know? <laughs> and I went to the conference and the very first thing I ever asked Dale Alquist was, what have you got for children? Because mm-hmm. I wanted a children's book. I would have bought it right then and there off the, off the table mm-hmm. if he had anything. And he said, nope, I don't have anything. Why don't you write something? There you <laughs> and go. I thought, I thought that was the most ridiculous idea in the whole world. But It's I, a very Dale answer, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I did actually, at the time, I wrote a couple of ideas up. And I even sent, so the first one was a board book. Very, Ooh. very simple. Uh, Cause Love my it. youngest daughter was pretty little and, and I sent that to Dale and he was like, Oh, that's um, too simple, too simple. <laughs> and then I had another idea. It was based on, so um, I lived in, I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And in my study of where Chesterton had traveled in the United States, I had discovered that he and Francis had actually traveled to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm. <laughs> so that fired my imagination. And I found a picture of a little girl that he met. And it, the idea of a story mm. taking place in Milwaukee with the Chestertons, with this girl. And I wrote that all up. Mm. And that also went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was somewhere in the archives. Yeah. Um, Sometimes then, you need to do a lot of pre-writing. I mean, oh, I definitely, you yeah. know, and not yeah. every di- not every idea you come up with is like a winner idea. Yeah. But yeah. writers, I think writers, and it's one of the things that I think Claire discovers in the story. You you need to practice writing, and practice mm-hmm. writing means you're writing stories, and sometimes they don't go anywhere. But that was still yeah. good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's still good for you to write things, even if they don't go anywhere, even if it's just for yourself. I mean, I've been a diary writers, uh, writer <laughs> since <laughs> I was probably, you know, in fifth grade. Yeah. So yeah. keeping a diary, uh, keeping a journal, that's practicing writing every day. And that that's good for a writer. So if you're a... It, yeah. Yeah. It should probably be called practicing writing, like practicing law or practice. Like you should... It should probably be called that because a lot of it, even <laughs> even when you get something published, you're like, I still feel like that wasn't good enough. You know, it, you could have made it better. Yeah. Yeah. And true. the next that's one will true. hopefully be better, but maybe not. So, right. well, <laughs> you know, there's no perfection on earth, but mm-hmm. we try, we try as best as we can. And so I think that is something that's helped me is that I've continued to write. Mm-hmm. And then when stories inspire me, like I, I definitely have written a lot of murder mysteries but mm. I've never gotten any of them or even tried to get them published. I send them to my daughter <laughs> and she loves them and that's good Aww. enough for me. <laughs> yeah. So, Aww. so anyway, so the first, mm. when the golden key kind of came to my mind, it was again in rereading that story about the nickel mm. family and the Chestertons. And what I thought when I was reading about them was that feels remote, like that happened mm. a long time ago. What if I could make a story that made it seem like it was happening right now and, mm. you know, all of that. And and that's kind of what started it all. Like, I want these girls to be alive and I want the Chestertons mm. to be alive, you know, because I always wish I could be the neighbor of Gilbert and Francis, that they could have been, mm. or that they were my aunt and uncle, you know, mm-hmm. that, that I could have visited them and talked to them the way you hear about in these stories that 
that just has that loving feeling and that acceptance and they would have just you know mm. loved you for who you were and helped you in your life and that sort of feeling i wanted to have that yeah. in in the story yeah that's yeah. that's great and honestly i have to say um for me you know not not since like the first chesterton book i read because at that point he was just someone who was writing the story i was reading but like chesterton has felt alive for me for a long time but I don't think it was until I read your book about Francis that she started to feel alive for me. Um, thank you for writing that. Uh, You're <laughs> well, it, just, it just opened her up in a way that no one ever had. And it was hard to find anything on the internet. It was one of those things that it was, it was great to have that resource. Um, so this is, this is, it's awesome that you're kind of trying to do that for children in right. a way well, that I also, think they respond to. Yeah. I th it's almost like there's, um, you know, the 2D version, this mm -hmm. flat version of Gilbert and Francis, which is what you see in a picture that's on the cover of, you know, one of their books, but then you want them to be 3D, you want them to be, mm -hmm. you know, more alive. And, and that's, that's, I think what, yeah, exactly what yeah. I tried to do with the stories. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it out in art. I love it. You know, it's, yeah. it's like when you see John Walker being Chesterton, yes. you're like, Oh, he's here. <laughs> you can really imagine yeah. what Chesterton was like when you see John. That's so true. It's very true. Yeah. Wonderful. So there's um, a little um, Easter egg mm, in here. Mm. Um, there's a mouse that runs through. <laughs> and and in, in the very end, I say, oh, if you're curious about the mouse, that is related. So uh, at this mm. last conference, I got to meet Haley Stewart. Nice. And she's written those Sister Serafina stories. Mm -hmm. So when I when we were talking in the evening at, at an afterglow, um, I said, oh, my gosh, I'm just finishing up this story. I'm going to put a mouse in the story. <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> she said, oh, that's that's like um, crossing over in this the Chesterton cinematic universe. The, yeah, the Chesterton <laughs> universe. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love so, it. It's like when you read something by another by the same author and they like mix their characters in for like a scene, you're like, oh, and then they go away again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. I love that. Um, yes. Yeah. And if you, if you are interested for our viewers and listeners, uh, we have interviewed Haley a couple of times uh, about her books as well. Um, and you should definitely check them out too. Um, they're available from Pauline Press. I don't have the link, but we can put it in the show notes. And I just, I want to take this little minute too, to give a little uh, uh, shout out to where you can get Nancy's book. Uh, of course, you can get it on our website at chesterton.org forward slash TMT, which stands for Top Meadow Troop. Uh, so that's where you can get the latest one. And if you want to get the golden key, you can also go to chesterton.org forward slash golden key. That's all one word. And uh, that's that's the best place to buy Nancy's books is from us. <laughs> and if you're you. a member, you can get your member discount with that. Oh yes, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Sign in, sign in with your membership, then you get the discount. Yes, mm -hmm. I noticed that you have a category on the Chesterton.org page that says young readers, mm -hmm. and there's four books listed there, and they're all four are mine. So the the <laughs> other two that I've written, just in case anyone doesn't know this. Um, I've written the Father Brown Reader one and two, mm. which are Father Brown stories adapted for younger readers. So mm. those have been super popular, Gretel. And oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many people have told me that their children, I mean, just out of the blue, people say, oh, are you really the person who wrote those? Yeah, I wrote those to my children. That's very exciting. Nice. Does it, does it make you happy when, when people recognize you as, as, you know, the children's author? Like, yes. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yes, wonderful. That's funny. And every once in a while, so, you know, I used to do this podcast. And so every once in a while at the conference, someone will turn around and say, I recognize your voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a distinctive voice. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, that's that's funny. Someone someone recently called me the woman behind the podcast, and I was like, "That's not true." There's a lot of people behind this <laughs> podcast, but, <laughs> well, but you, yeah, you have inherited the current generation of this. I, podcast. I know it's it was yeah. yeah, and it's it's been uh it's been some big shoes to fill, but you know. We you guys it's, are doing a great job, both of you. It's well, it's fun, and and it's really great to have you on uh, again. And and uh, yeah, 
I don't know. Yeah. I told my husband today, I'm like, I guess talk to Nancy. Yay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, wonderful. Well, uh, yeah. So, so definitely check out our website and get these books for your kids or grandkids in time for Christmas. Um, any, yeah, it's, especially this story, the Tap Meadow Trip yeah. is perfect for Christmas. It has a beautiful cover on it too. It looks very Christmassy. So. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the illustrations. They're so, they're so sweet. Um, how did you find this illustrator or was it, how did this work out? So the first time when I wrote um, the Chesterton's and the Golden Key, I was working with Regina Dome, and I believe that we have some interviews with her as well. I, probably um, we do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I might have even interviewed her. But anyway, she was running um, at the time. She and her husband felt uh, compelled to have a, a, a publishing arm of their business, which they called the Chesterton Press. And mm -hmm. so um, Regina and I had met Regina you know, multiple times through the homeschooling world and through the Chesterton world. And so she helped me with the very first book. Mm. She actually located, um, or possibly knew Anne, um, Anne Engelhart is the um, mm. illustrator. Anne lives um, on Long Island and she's Catholic. I had never met her, but I worked with her on the first book. And once we had the first book, I wanted the second book to look consistent. And I knew mm. Anne was super talented. Mm -hmm. And so when Dale Alquist and I started talking about in, that the Chesterton Society would publish it, we talked about bringing Anne back in um, to work on it. And we just had to check with her and see if, if it, her schedule allowed it because she's a, a very good artist and she's very mm -hmm. popular. She's working all the time on other children's books, but mm -hmm. she had time to work on it. And the, so she created the color, the watercolor of the front mm -hmm. cover. And then there are illustrations for every single chapter. Uh, um, and they're just lovely. They add so much to the story. So, uh, yes, Anne was great. And I also should mention Rose Gavaretsky, um, our Rose who works for the Chesterton Society. Mm -hmm. Um, she did the editing of this book and, mm -hmm. um, was a great help to me. So I just want to mention her. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Rose is, uh, Rose is the woman behind a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, uh, you know, fun fact, spoiler alert, she edits every Gilbert <laughs> magazine, except for the last mm -hmm. one because she was having a baby. But other than right. that. <laughs> right. So, you know, we'll look through and we'll find all the typos. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. she wasn't in there. <laughs> no, she's, she's amazing. Uh, yes. Yeah. So shout out, shout out to Rose and uh, yep. hope you're enjoying your baby right now. Oh yeah, um, I'm sure she is. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, well, do you, would you, um, actually, would you open the book and just show us a, an illustration from the inside? Just give us a oh, yeah. so sneak peek I, there. I talked about the dog show. Mm. So, um, here's an illustration <gasps> of the dog show. I love that. So just, just so <laughs> you can, um, pick out here's <laughs> wink, winkle right there. Nice. Okay. <laughs> well, I think this is one of Anne's dogs. So Anne has a dog and she she drew him or her mm -hmm. into the picture. This last little puppy right here, this is my daughter's dog. Oh. <laughs> his, his name is Pedro. So he he made oh. it into the story as, as one of the dogs. It. So that is oh, if, of, if, yeah. if you're just listening on a podcast platform, uh, make sure you, you hop over to YouTube and check this out. It is <laughs> yeah. too cute. And uh, just, just to give a little bit of a sneak peek so, you know. Hopefully. Oh yeah! If you were teetering on whether or not to buy it now, you know you should because <laughs> <Sure. laughs> really cute dogs. Oh, oh yeah. man! So that's just a little part of the story. There's a um, so I should mention there's a barber in the story, and and mm. they go to the barber shop. Well, this is part of the true story of J Chesterton that hardly anyone knows. He would go to the barber shop every single day. He didn't shave himself. The barber <laughs> shaved him every day. Oh. So oh he gosh. walked into town and he, and that's where he heard all the town news mm. was in the barber shop. Well, in my story, the barber's name is Ted Sovey because my grandfather was a barber and mm. had his own barber shop. So, mm. and, and I'm pretending that my grandfather is the barber that used to shave <laughs> um, Gilbert every day. So he oh. figures into the story too. So that's kind of fun. My mom that's... was surprised when she read it. She was like, oh, that, cause it's her dad. Um, nice. Who is the barber. Yeah. So, so you can't really, you know, you could put in the, the front, you got, you know, there's always that disclaimer, like, no, these aren't real people, but that's, <laughs> Not true, because there's a lot of real people. people. <laughs> yeah. Most of the people is... in there are, are real people that just, you know, happen to be having a story that's being told about them. Mm, I love it. I love it. Um, 
So if, if you want to get more uh, GK Chesterton into your life and really kind of bring him into 3D, as, as you said, Nancy, definitely check these books out. We'll have links in the show notes and the description and uh, you can you can find them there. Um, any any last thoughts, Nancy, before we wrap up here? Yes. Well, we, we didn't really mention like what grade level or what age mm. level this is for. And yes, in a broad sense, I could say these stories are for everyone. Mm. Anyone could read them. Um, John Walker happens to be a huge fan. He's an adult <laughs> and he loves these books. Mm. Um, so adults can read them. My mom read it and enjoyed it. Um, but mm. if you, I don't, I wouldn't give it to a child necessarily to read independently because I think mm. they would make a great read aloud mm -hmm. for a family to read together. Mm. Um, but if you did let a child just go with it, I would say probably grades four to eight would be mm. good age range and you know any any grade school child would enjoy it but even older children i think the stories the children are 12 10 and 8 so that usually means that's about the age that would read sure. that story yeah oh i love it though i don't know i i i was a great reader as soon as i learned to read and and you know there's always i think i read sort of out of my age group sometimes and it was no problem yeah yep. lots <laughs> but, of kids can do that sure yeah, yeah yeah but uh yeah definitely i i think they look like great read aloud books and i i would love to snuggle up with a little someone and read them that would be really fun yeah uh, well thank you so much for joining us again nancy um and really thank you for having me gretelyn oh it's it's always fun um and really make sure that you check out Nancy's books, uh, all of them, <laughs> but especially these, these, this last one and the prequel, the golden key, um, a lot of, a lot of great stuff here and, and help spread Chesterton to the next generation, uh, is what I think it will do. And again, uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, get notified every time we, uh, we, uh, put out new content and if you have anything that you want to hear about or if you have any thoughts about nancy's books feel free to email us at podcast at chesterton.org leave us a comment uh, we always want to know what you're thinking we want to bring you the content that you want to hear too um, yeah so let us know and remember chesterton is always better with friends thank you talk to you next time and god bless